everyone out there it's good to be with you today again um, this is grace Rimam Nora coming to you from Rimam global ministries with an interesting series this is the relationship series particularly single and satisfied and I trust the Lord that you will be blessed today so kindly share this video and invite your friends to come join you because today we are out for the men out there the eligible bachelors and our brothers and our friends you will need to listen to this our title today is how to be mr right how should i prepare myself you know i've tried talking to several ladies and somehow they just keep saying no no and no and they've told me i have spiritual issues is that really right we are going to handle that today by the grace of God. So once again, you are welcome. Let's pray as we jump right in. Father, we want to say thank you for yet another exciting time in your presence. Every time in your presence is an opportunity for a change and a transformation. We ask that that transformation take place in the lives of everyone listening here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So once again, I welcome you to this wonderful episode. And the title is how to be mr. right how do I prep myself for marriage how do I prep myself as a bachelor and um, you will be blessed so I would like to appreciate my husband the coordinator of Raymond global ministries for giving me this opportunity to bring this to you today now let's go into this topic by doing a brief recap from last episode and the last episode the title was Leave me alone, I can lead myself. I would encourage you to go get that because just a brief highlight. We talked about how Samson tried to lead himself and we see what was his outcome. It was not good at all. He lost his sight. He lost his vision. And then we also saw that being led by the Spirit is the way not to miss it. Not only in relationship and marriage, but in life as a whole. You cannot do life without the Holy Spirit. And we said it comes from being born of the spirit please go pick up that episode and listen again as you visit Riman global ministries i can assure you that you will be blessed so let's go right into today's topic how to become mr right number one i started by saying you must abide in him you must abide in him and who is the him we're talking about we're talking about Jesus Christ. You must abide in him. Let's look at what the scripture says in John 15 verse 5. John chapter 15 verse 5. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. It's so amazing that Jesus simplifies everything for us. He says, without me, you cannot do anything. Business, marriage, relationships. No wonder the frustration. So he gave an advice that you must abide. And I checked the, the Greek dictionary meaning of the word abide, where the Bible was originally written. And it, it means menu. It's a word menu. It means to dwell, to continue in him. So you must continue in Christ Jesus. If you must be a man after his heart, that will satisfy not just your wife to be but we're talking about satisfying god you must abide in him that's number one so let's jump right into number two number two is you must have an understanding of marriage by going through the marriage manual hmm. you must have an understanding of marriage by going through the marriage manual and what's the marriage manual? It's the Bible. Your Bible, oh yes, is the marriage manual. It's the best manual you can read on marriage. I know your parents played out marriage before you. I don't care how good their marriage was. It can be better. Yours can be better. And that's why the Bible is there. Do you know that the Bible is basically talking about marriage? No wonder Genesis, God began by introducing marriage between Adam and Eve. And then Revelation closes up by talking about a marriage 
between the lamb that's talking about Jesus Christ and his bride that's the church so the book starts with marriage and ends with marriage so it's a marriage manual so I discovered that as you get better at being a Christian you get better at being a husband or a wife or you get better at being that man in that relationship or that lady so you must go through the marriage manual no wonder Look at what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. Let's read it together. Proverbs 24, 3. The Bible says, Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. Through wisdom it is builded. So, you cannot um, ignore the word of God. You need the wisdom and the understanding from scriptures. And that word understanding means intelligence it means skillfulness whatever you don't do with skill it shows when it's not done with skill it shows so please i would like you to go through the bible day after day don't leave any day aside don't leave because i tell you you don't miss food any day you always eat on a daily basis to maintain a healthy life so also to maintain a healthy spirit you must feed on God's word every day. And I usually recommend at least three chapters. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. And do this consistently. Okay? So let's move on to number three. Number three is be a responsible man. A lot of ladies out there. You know, I've spoken with several ladies. And the same issues keep coming up. I don't feel he's responsible. The totality of what they are saying so be a responsible man number one we said abide in him number two we said get understanding read literatures in addition to reading the bible read christian literatures how many books have you read on marriage and here you are in a relationship about to be a shipwreck or create a wreck out of your relationship because of lack of understanding so get books get materials number three be responsible no wonder the scripture says in Genesis 2 verse 24, it says, So shall a man leave his father and his mother. He didn't say a boy. He said a man. So that manhood calls for responsibility. It calls for responsibility. Ladies are looking for a responsible man. And when I say responsible, I'm not talking about a man that has several riches. It's good, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about somebody that is putting in effort day by day. Somebody that is making effort financially. You know, this whole thing, it, it shows me, it reminds me of what Miles Moreau said. He said something. He said that marriage is an exchange of fatherhood. You know, on that day, can you remember on the wedding day, it's the bride's father that walks her down the aisle and hands her to the priest who hands her over to a new father. That is reconciling her back to her source because this woman came from the man and she's going back to her source. So father means source, it means sustainer. Do you understand? So she's coming back to her source. You are to sustain this woman financially life has to come from you into her so my question is are you a responsible man are you ready to be a father to her and what do i mean by that you continue with the work the father her father was doing a lady was telling me how it was so awkward that they entered the bus together and this brother you know when they were about to come down from the vehicle the guy that she's, she she was with that they are supposedly in a relationship with you know when it was time to pay the the cab fare he just threw his face aside as if he didn't know what was going on it would have been a different matter if he had said oh sorry i didn't bring cash but he ignored that responsibility and pretended that's wrong so ladies are looking for a man who is responsible not a stingy person show some i remember my husband back then he didn't have money because he had not gotten a job it was six months into our relationship that he got a job but when we met i heard vision in his voice i saw a well laid out plan 
In fact, he was working for free at a primary, at a secondary school. That showed me that this man is responsible, just waiting for money to come into his hands. And as God will have it, six months into our relationship, he got a job. But before then, he would buy, you know, small, he knows the little, little things I like that are not expensive. He would buy those things and come around with them. And it was such a joy because I could see that if this person has, he would do better. So be a responsible man. Number four, as we round off for today, a man who is affectionate is another one that they are looking for. <laughs> they are looking for an affectionate brother. They are looking for an affectionate man. You don't treat her as childish. You treat her like a baby. They are two different things. You pamper her. I'm not saying you say, ah, your opinion doesn't matter. You are a woman or you are a little girl. No, that's not what we're saying. But we're saying that you pamper her. Show her some affection. You know, it's funny that some Christians equate affection for carnality. They say, hey, I don't want to be seen saying I love you. It sounds unholy and dirty. Ah, when God even says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. God used to pamper also. Sometimes I'm just saying, and I hear quietly in my spirit, grace, I love you. Ah, it suits me. It brings some calming in my spirit. And that's coming from God. So how much more you? You would need to pamper her with a lot of words. I remember my husband back then who used Sons of Solomon <laughs> to give me a lot of, you know, uh, dose of affection. I'm not talking about going overboard because we know that the line is drawn. A responsible man will not go ahead touching, kissing, and having sex during relationships. That is a total no-no because the Bible says that you are not to have anything to do with her till, I mean, you know, showing of disaffection bodily till marriage covenant has been ensued. So that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm just talking about being able to say, thank you. I love you. You look good today. You are beautiful. I appreciate you. I'm sorry for what I've done. These are words that ladies want to feel around you. They want to feel the kindness. They want to feel the affection. And then the last for today is the ladies are looking for men that love children. Interesting. <laughs> Do you know that this follows even the ego? I heard something. Some people say it's a myth. Some people say it's true. But let's share it for today's context. It is said that the ego the female ego, when the male starts coming around her, guess what she does? She will take a stick that is, you know, equivalent to the weight of a baby eaglet. Since this ego is coming around and wanting to mate with her for them to be partners. So what she does, she takes this stick and flies to some height and throws it down. The male ego would catch it before it lands on the ground. Then she increases the height and throws the stick down again and he catches it and then she increases the third time to a, a higher height and throws it down and he catches it the moment he catches it then she knows that ah this one is going to be a good let me use husband ego <laughs> and it's just so amazing and they come together and stay together for 40 good years that's true 40 years so men out there can i tell you a secret that lady is looking to you she's looking how? And the reason why the eaglet does that is because at a point when they start having, why the eagle, female eagle does that is because when they start having baby eagles, eaglets, when they start having, a, a time comes when they push them out of the nest to teach them how to fly. The father eagle goes down in case that baby doesn't take off in flight as expected and starts falling down. The father eagle is able to catch. So can you see why she was running a test before they even started the relationship? Before they started the relationship. So the ladies are looking. Another lady told me a story of how she was carrying a baby, even though that was, you know, within her office where she was working. She just had to hold the baby for somebody. And a man came and needed attention. And he was like looking down on the baby. What kind of, you know, just talking down on the baby and all that. That lady told me that she refused to answer that man that day. <laughs> and I laughed. She took it very personal. 
She said she refused to answer that man that day. Because for women and for ladies, we have a bond with children. We carry them for nine months. So there's a bond. So naturally she's looking, how do you treat your mother? How do you treat your siblings? How do you treat little children? Do you talk them down? Do you insult them? Do you harass them? So please and please, I would like to tell you that this can be summed up by saying Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. And the scripture tells us the fruits of the spirit, goodness and kindness. That's where this one falls under. Goodness and kindness. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew 19 verse 14. He said he called the little children to himself. He called them to himself. So what are we saying? Dear brother, if the sisters have been rejecting you, have been pushing you around, can you sit back and think? Am I abiding in him? That was our number one point. Number two, am I, do I have a full understanding? Have I sat down to count the cost of what I'm going into? Am I studying the word, the marriage manual, the Bible? Number three, am I responsible? Then, number four, we talked about affection. How do I talk to these ladies? And then finally, we talked about love for children and family. So we're going to stop here for today. And I can assure you that in the next episode, we're going to bring you more tips on how to be this. All right? So please stay tuned and kindly share this. But let me tell you that you must connect to Jesus. Connect with him. By the end of the end times, there's nothing else to live for than for him. And it's my joy and privilege to lead you to connect with him. Because without the spirit of God inside of you, you may forget these things and you keep fumbling. But he's there to guide you because he loves you. So let's pray together. Can you repeat this after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Please wash me with your blood. I receive you today as my friend, as my Lord, as my Savior. I renounce every other covenant. I come against every consequence awaiting my future. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for everyone viewing. I cover with them with the blood of Jesus. I pray that they will not make a mistake. I pray that you will lead them and order their steps and guide them in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you so much and we appreciate you so much for staying tuned and for viewing our videos and the episode. And I would like to remind you, subscribe so that you always receive our notifications. Like this message and share with your friends and loved ones. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.